So we're doing 5.2 today. This is on representing functions. A function is a special type of relation, which we're going to see below here in this box. So we're going to define some key terms in this box. And you have to know what these are because we're going to be using them throughout the unit. A relation is essentially a relationship. It's a relationship between two sets of elements. Um, it, those elements could be anything. They could be like physical objects or they could just be numbers. Um, they could be letters, symbols, anything. Uh, here though, we're going to use some like actual objects so we can get a better sense of what it means to relate different things. So here we have vehicles and number of wheels. Now the first set of objects is often called the input. Okay. And then the second set is sometimes called the output. If we're using variables to represent these, often this is represented with X and this is represented with Y, just trying to make some connections to previous courses here. Okay, so in our input box, we see that we have different vehicle types. We have tricycle, motorcycle, bicycle, car, and then this arrow diagram maps those to different numbers of wheels. So for example, tricycle maps to three because tricycles have three wheels. Motorcycle and bicycle both mapped two because they have two wheels and car to four. Um, just a key word here that we're gonna use a lot, this first set of elements, so tricycle, motorcycle, bicycle, car, those are called the domain, okay? And the second set of elements is called the range. So in this case, that would be two, three, four, okay? This is a relation, it relates one group of objects to another. This relation also happens to be a function. So not all relations are functions. We're going to see examples today of things that relations that are not functions, but this is a function. And the definition of a function is that anything in the domain can only have one mapping, can only relate to one thing in the range. Tricycle cannot have two different numbers of wheels just one it only has three wheels that's it so that is a function it's a special type of relationship where each x or input or each thing in the domain only maps to one thing in the range okay let's look at some examples here we have two relationships they're both represented differently i'm going to explain that in a second but let's just read the question it said it says determine whether each relation is a function or not justify your choice and then it says, if it is a function, identify the domain and the range. I'm going to use the same colors for domain and range. Okay, let's look at the first thing here. This is a set of ordered pairs. So we see that there are four sets of brackets. These are called ordered pairs in math. And we always list the input first and then the output second. Okay, so... This would be like the X if you were graphing it, and this would be like the Y. So we have triangle mapping with three, square being related to four, rectangle being related to four, and hexagon being related to six. So we're mapping here the type of shape with the number of sides it has. So if each domain only has one answer for a range, then it is a function. So this one is a function because a triangle only has three sides. It doesn't have three sides or four sides, for example. There's only one answer in the range for each thing in the domain here. So this is a function. Each element in the domain, those yellow things, each shape, only maps or relates to one, not two, or three, only one element in the range. Okay, so this is a function. And if I was going to say what the domain is, this is how I would write it out. I would use these little curly brackets. We use these little curly brackets in math when we are listing things. Um, and I'm just gonna list all those yellow objects. So triangle, square, rectangle, hexagon. Triangle, square, rectangle, hexagon. 
I did hex for short because I couldn't fit it in there. Okay, and then the range would be all of the outputs. Now, if something is listed twice, you don't have to write it twice. So here we have three as a possibility for a number of sides. We have um, four and we have six. Those are the only numbers of sides we have in this example. So that would be a range. Okay, let's look at the next one. I'm gonna just, okay, so this one's an arrow diagram. I have three things in the domain. And one, two, three, four, five things in the second, in the output box. Okay, and then we can see the words here describing what this is. So it says one, for example, is the square of one and negative one. So essentially this is saying um, one is one squared and it's also negative one squared. Four is the square of negative two and it's the square of two. Nine is the square of three and negative three. So here we can notice that there are multiple mappings for each thing in the domain. So this is not a function. So when one thing in the domain maps to more than one thing in the range, it's not a function. Each element in the domain relates to more than one element in the range. The reason we care about whether something is a function or not is because functions have certain properties and we're gonna begin working with those a lot in your next few math courses. And so if something's a function, then it has certain things that, um, certain properties that go along with it. Not a function, each element in the domain maps to more than one. Oops. So to be a function, each element in the domain would only map to one. Then one element in the range. Okay, good. Let's look at the example two here. It says, oh, here's another way that we can represent a relationship in a table. So, so far, just to kind of summarize, we've seen functions represented uh, as ordered pairs. We've seen them represented as arrow diagrams. And also here we have a table. You could also use a graph. You could use words. There's lots of ways to represent functions. So here we have a table. It says determine whether the relation is a function. And then it says identify the independent and dependent variable. So we're gonna talk about that. And then write the domain and range. Okay, so first let's figure out if this is a function. So here's my first set of objects. This is like the input. And then here is the output, right? Each input maps to exactly one output each element in the domain maps to one element in the range. So yes, this is a function. Okay. B. Okay. When we have a relationship, we always make the input, the independent variable. It is independent of the other one. So here the mass of the marbles depends on how many marbles you have. So the independent variable is always listed first. It's always like the X on the X axis. If you're drawing a graph in a table, it's always listed first. So the independent and it's always the input variable and you don't list the objects here. We just write the title of it. So be the number of marbles. And it's also given a variable N. Okay. So that's our independent variable. It's the number of marbles is changing. It could be one, two, three, four, five, or six. But again, to identify it, it would just be the first set of objects in a table, in an arrow diagram, it would be on the left side. Um, in the ordered pairs, it would be the first listed first. Okay. And then the second is called the dependent variable. And it always depends on the independent variable. So here, the mass, how heavy the marbles are, definitely depends on how many marbles there are. So that's why this is the dependent variable, so mass of marbles. And it's denoted with the variable m here, okay? So often we give these inputs and outputs 
a letter. Usually the letter kind of describes what it is. So M for mass and N for number. Okay, and then finally C, the domain. It's just all the different elements in the input set. So it could be one marble, two marble, and you could do dot, dot, dot if there's a nice pattern. And I usually try and write the last few. Okay, so that's our domain. And then our range. And remember we use curly brackets to represent uh, lists when we're listing things. So there is a nice pattern here too. It goes up, looks like by 1.27. So we can do the dot, dot, dot here as well. As long as there's a nice pattern, you can do a dot, dot, dot and just list the first couple and then the last one is okay. Okay, good. So there's our domain and range. Okay, uh, let's do another example. Here we're gonna actually see a uh, function represented in an equation format. So, so far, just to, just to kind of summarize, we've seen functions and relations represented with ordered pairs, with arrow diagrams, with tables, and now we're gonna see a, an equation. Okay, so here it says V equals negative 0.08D, just gonna highlight the different letters, um, represents volume in liters of gas remaining in a vehicle's tank after traveling d kilometers. So the different variables here are the liters of gas and the distance in kilometers. The gas tank is not refilled till it's empty, it says. Okay, write the equation in function notation. So this is called, this is not function notation. I'm going to show you there's this very small difference. It's very subtle. All we're going to write it is like this, v and we say of d equals negative 0.08 d plus 50. This is not a multiplication. What it means is v depends on the letter d. So when we say it out loud in words, we say v of d. Okay. So here it says determine the value of v of 600. So here the distance that we're going to input into the equation is 600. So 600 is going to be our distance. And we're going to input it into the equation and we're going to get the volume of gas out as an output. Okay, so we're going to do V of 600 equals, and I'm going to just copy the equation like normal, except instead of D, I'm going to put this number 600 in that spot. So essentially in those brackets, it tells you what to input into the equation. Okay, so I'm going to put 600 in here. I'll get my calculator out. I should be able to do that in my head, but I'm going to confirm. Okay, so 0 0.08 times 600 is negative 48. So this would be negative two. Now this is a word problem, so we shouldn't just answer it like this, negative two. Oh, sorry, positive two. Negative 48 plus 50 is positive two. I was thinking to myself, how can you have negative liters of gas? Okay, um, V, remember, represents liters. So this would be two liters of gas remain after traveling 600 kilometers. Okay, so the 600 was what we inputted, and the output, the answer, or the volume, was 2. Okay, let's try another example. This time it says, determine the value of d, so this time we don't know the distance, when v of d is 26. So when the answer is 26, what distance is inputted? So here we're going to have the answer is 26, but we don't know the distance. So we're going to use some algebra and opposite operations to solve here. We're going to subtract 50 from both sides. So we'll get negative 24 equals negative 0.08d. And we're trying to isolate d here. We're trying to solve for it. So we're going to divide by negative 0.08. And we will end up with 300. 
So the answer is in a sentence after traveling 300 kilometers, 26 liters of gas is left in the tank. Okay, so the 26 was the answer or the output and that's what we were given here. And we had to figure out what number of kilometers was driven. We didn't know the D, so we solved for D here. Okay, um, so that's an example of when you have your function or your relationship written in an equation format. This is one is more abstract. This one I would recommend you pausing the video here and trying on your own and then coming back to check your answers. Okay, so when, when the situation is abstract, we use the letters F for function. Okay, so this is gonna be like our output, the function, and then X is the input. Um, it is equivalent, in previous grades you may have seen this, Y equals two X plus or minus five. It's the same thing, okay? Y is the output, X is the input. It's just a little bit better here to use function notation because it's a little bit easier to ask questions. So for example, here it says, what is the function, what is F of two? So we're inputting two into the equation. And it says, what is F of 10? We're inputting 10 into the equation. So we're gonna have two answers, one for two, one for 10. I'll split up my page. F of two. So here's the equation, two times x minus five. So where the x is, where the input spot is, we're gonna put the number two and we're gonna evaluate it. So this would be four minus five, which is negative one. So f of two equals negative one. Okay, let's try f of 10. So we're gonna put 10 into the equation. We're gonna input 10 where the X is in the equation. So this would be 20 minus five, which is 15. So F of 10 is 15. Okay. All right, let's try the opposite type of question. This time we're gonna be given the answer. So notice here, we don't have the input. We don't know what X is, but we know the answer is 15. Okay, so here, we know the answer is negative 15 when we input some number that is unknown. So we are trying to find the input, the x. Okay, let's do that by opposite operations. So we're gonna add five to both sides. We'll get negative 10 equals two x, divide by two. And here we have negative five equals x. So five must have been the input that gave 15 negative 15, sorry, as the output. Okay, there we go. That's an introduction to functions. Um, and one last thing I wanna say here is these last two examples, we were using equations. Now, if your relation is a function um, and involves numbers, you'll often be able to use an equation. But if it's a relation, um, sometimes you cannot use an equation to represent it. So that's another reason why you'd wanna know whether something's a function or not, because then you'll know whether you can represent it with an equation or not. Okay, that's the end of the lesson.